Hi and welcome. Today we're going to talk about peripheral artery disease, which I will be referring to as PAD. In fact, this is a condition that gradually narrows the arteries, reducing blood flow to the limbs, particularly the legs. Living with PAD can feel like running a marathon in a slow motion. While others dash ahead with ease, those affected often experience fatigue and pain with every step and making a simple walk feel like a monumental challenge. This condition not only impacts mobility, but also reminds us as individuals to take a more thoughtful approach when it comes to our health. So hit the subscribe button and let's delve into the disorder known as peripheral artery disease. All right, so peripheral artery disease is a condition marked by diminished blood flow through the arteries that supply to the extremities, particularly the legs, and this results in pain and discomfort during physical activity or even at rest. The most prevalent cause of PAD is an arteriosclerosis, and this disorder is also characterized by the buildup of plaques within the walls of larger and medium caliber arteries, which includes the aorta iliac, the common iliac, external iliac, femoral, specifically I want to mention the superficial femoral artery and the popliteal arteries may also be involved. Further, there is also the anterior and the posterior tibial arteries as well. All right, so eventually this leads to narrowing of the vessel and stiffness around the vessels and the artery becomes incapable of constricting and dilating to regulate, you know, blood pressure. And this ultimately leads to a limiting blood flow. Additionally, other significant contributors to PAD can include an emboli, which you can see right there. And here, uh, it may originate from the cardiac chamber or from a ruptured uh, atherosclerotic plaque, which obstructs the arteries, particularly at the sites where the arteries branches. Moreover, factors such as arterial injuries, inflammations, Okay, uh, structural anomalies and tumor lysis uh, may also lead to narrowing and impede adequate blood circulation. So the question is why that intermittent claudication? So we have an illustration of an artery that is affected right here with arteriosclerosis. And I want to emphasize that if 75% or more of the cross-sectional area of the artery is compromised, this is about 50% of the diameter then this will significantly impede blood flow across the narrowed segment, okay? Now, as the disease progresses, collateral circulation also develops. So as you can see, these are collaterals. What is the purpose? Well, they develop and they provide alternative pathways for blood to reach the distal extremities, which helps preserve perfusion and can alleviate symptoms. In other words, making the patient even asymptomatic. So the development of collateral is an important factor that can actually determine the cause of PAD. Now, doing physical activities as this lady right here is doing, for example, exercise or any other activities, there is an increased demand for oxygen-rich blood, which often exceeds the supply. So the demand in blood flow as a result of the activity is not met by the collaterals, even if the collaterals are operating at the maximum flow the collaterals are not able to deliver as much as blood would have gone through the area that was, or the area that is blocked, okay? So this disparity can result in a temporary ischemia manifesting as pain, cramps, or fatigue in the muscles, prompting patients to slow down and allow time for adequate blood supply to catch up, thereby alleviating the discomfort until blood flow stabilizes. So this leads to the classic uh, intermittent claudication. It's important that I mention that that symptom is only found in 10% of the cases. In fact, about 40% of patients with PAD may come without symptoms. And the rest of the 50%, they may have different symptoms like heaviness, pressure-like feelings, you know, cramps, described differently. 
Okay, so the fact that there is no symptoms does not exclude a peripheral artery disease. Now, regarding the clinical manifestations, PAD may sometimes present with the classic intermittent claudication, a condition that is marked by cramping pain, fatigue, or a sensation of pressure in the legs or buttocks during physical activity, which is determined by the location of the occluded artery. So, for instance, Patients with femoral popliteal PAD may experience calf pain, while those with iliac artery occlusion may feel a discomfort in the thigh and buttocks, which requires them to slow down until the symptoms subside. In more severe cases, PAD can also lead to pain at rest and a burning sensation, particularly at night, leaving some patients to leave their legs hanging low or dangling. Moreover, PAD also serves as an indicator of systemic atherosclerosis, potentially leading to erectile dysfunction and an increased cardiovascular risk. There may also be wounds and gangrenes observed. Now, recognizing acute limb ischemia is crucial to preventing limb loss, and the key signs include the six Ps, pain, pallor, pulselessness, paresthesia, perishingly cold, and paralysis. In the evaluation of PAD, it is essential to meticulously assess modifiable risk factors that may contribute to the condition such as hypertension, smoking, diabetes, dyslipidemia. A thorough physical examination should begin, assess patient's ability to walk, note any claudication, pain, and paresthesia at rest. Delicately assessing the pulses is crucial along with a visual inspection of the extremities for signs of pallor, cyanosis, wounds, or the alarming presence of a gangrene. The skin should also be examined for dystrophic changes in the nails or hair growth in the area, revealing underlying circulatory issues. Furthermore, assessing muscle power and tone is vital, and a careful auscultation may also detect a bruit providing additional insight into vascular flow abnormalities. Burke's test involves observing the color changes in the foot while the patient is supine and the limb is elevated to about 45 degrees. A healthy limb will maintain its color while in compromised circulation, the foot may turn pale. Now, upon lowering the leg, a pink flush may indicate a reactive hyperemia, suggesting a potential artery insufficiency. All right, so here we are looking at a very important diagnostic tool in the evaluation that is an ankle brachial index ABI. And this actually involves measuring the systolic blood pressures in the upper extremity and comparing it with the SBP in the lower extremity. A normal ABI range is between 0 0.9 to 1.3. However, an ABI value of less than 0 0.9 typically indicates the presence of a peripheral artery disease. Claudication presents when ABI is between around 0 0.5 to 0 0.9. When ABI drops below 0 0.5, patients may experience a resting pain right there, okay, which signals more severe artery insufficiency. Conversely, an elevated ABI greater than 1.3 can be suggestive of an artery wall stiffness. This may be seen in diabetes mellitus as well as in chronic kidney diseases. So a comprehensive assessment for PAD is vital as it serves as a marker for systemic atherosclerosis. And it is often linked to serious complications like myocardial infections, strokes, and the cardiovascular mortality. To thoroughly evaluate the patient's cardiovascular health, monitoring blood glucose, glycated hemoglobin, lipid levels, and renal function, including electrolyte, is essential. Additionally, measuring homocysteine levels and conducting a thrombophilia panel can also provide crucial insights for diagnosis. Furthermore, a complete blood count is also important for identifying conditions like anemia or polycythemia, which may even exacerbate the disorder. Imaging modalities play a crucial role in the management of PAD by precisely identifying the site of arterial occlusion, which facilitates informed decision-making regarding potential surgical interventions. Techniques such as ultrasounds, that is Doppler, a CD angiography, MR angiography, arteriography, are all very instrumental in visualizing the level of the occlusion.
All right, so in managing PAD, it is crucial to thoroughly address and educate patients about all potential risk factors associated with the condition. Emphasis should also be placed on improving ambulation right there. Okay, through supervised exercise programs, which may involve exercising to the point of pain, as this can significantly enhance mobility. The Choosing Wisely campaign underscores that surgical interventions such as bypass surgery or angioplasty should not be the first line approach for most individuals with intermittent claudication. Now, initially, pharmacological options may be explored, including silostazole, which is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Okay, it has an antiplatelet as well as a vasodilatory property, and it may alleviate symptoms. In fact, it must be used with caution if the patient has heart failure. Depending on the patient's overall risk profile and existing cardiovascular conditions, additional agents such as aspirin, clopidogrel, and ticagrelor, antihypertensives such as AC inhibitors and ARBs, and even statins may also be considered integral to a comprehensive management therapy. Now, when patients do not respond adequately to guideline-directed conservative therapies, including exercise and lifestyle modifications, it becomes essential to consider revascularization options for cases involving a single arterial segment angioplasty with or without stent may be pursued to restore blood flow. In instances of more extensive atherosclerotic disease, a bypass graft surgery can offer a viable solution, while endoterectomy may also be appropriate for certain patients. In acute limb ischemia caused by an emboli, embolectomy is recognized as a standard treatment approach. However, in the unfortunate circumstances where all restorative measures fail to salvage the affected limb, amputation may be regrettably be a necessary uh, option for the patient's overall health and well-being. Thank you, and I hope this was useful. If you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Bye.